Good morning, Forest Heights Baptist Church. I'd like to welcome you all back to the church today, okay? It is so wonderful to see so many faces. I've been absent for a while, and let me tell you, I felt that absence. It is wonderful to see your face. But here at Forest Heights Baptist Church, we like to encourage people, so it's good to see you all. I'm glad you're here. We're thankful for all of those on Zoom. We're thankful for all of those on YouTube. But I welcome you here for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. We know the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Thus said the Lord. So this morning, I'm going to do the announcement for you now that we have the welcome. The announcements are as follows for July the 16th. Today is Communion Sunday, we all know. For those who are at home, I'm asking you to go ahead and get your cup and be prepared at the end of the service today to commune with us. Your place for Jesus is right there at home where you met him at watching this on Zoom today. So make that space your private space to commune with your Lord and Savior today. Amen. After the service this day, the pastor wants to meet with all the ministries for a few moments after the service oh, the ministry heads after the service today, okay? Also, we finally have a scheduled date, a correct scheduled date for the dedication of baby Landon. It's going to be July the 30th, okay? The last Sunday in this month. Amen. So now that the announcements are out of the way, join with me and our opening hymn this morning. Your bulletin has been changed around on page 141. Is it 146? Oh, how I love Jesus. Please stand. Oh, how he loves you and me. worship followed by the invocation and then another hymn amen, amen. i was glad when they said unto me yeah. let us go into the house of the lord for great is the lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable mm -hmm. for the lord is righteous in all of his ways and holy in all of his works yeah. the lord is near unto they they that call upon his name and in truth. Hear, O Israel, 
that the Lord thy God is one God. And we should worship him mm -hmm. in truth and in spirit. Yes, Eternal and all wise God, we're grateful for yet another opportunity to come to this household of faith. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to give us the understanding that which we stand in the need of. We welcome the visitation yes. of yes, your Lord. Holy Spirit into this household. Yes. Father, I'm thankful for they that uh, have appeared today for bringing us back at the appointed time our pastor and not only our pastor but I see Adrian Jones out there we thank you Lord yeah. we thank you Lord for that which you are doing in the ministry and that which you have already done now by thee O oh God who have made us in the Holy Spirit that comforts us uh, do I pray and say amen amen amen, amen. 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 I thank God for his sense of humor, because every time I get up here, I change things around. Right. But you know what? I bless the Lord for the spirit that is in me and all that is in me. I bless God for giving me strength just to stand here before you now, okay? Because this is nothing I can do by myself. Only by God's strength, only by his grace, only by his mercy can I get through this. Carol Ann, grab your hymnal. Hymnal number 139, congregation, hymnal number 139 at the cross. Just keep on giving, 
because it's really true that you can't be God's gift. our heads. Almighty God, we come humbly to you this wonderful, wonderful day and thank you so much for the opportunity that you allow us to have to give back to you that which you have given to us, oh God. Father, we ask that you would bless each and every one of us that have been able to give and those who want to a Heavenly Father and unable to right now, we know that you understand. So I don't want them to feel in any way, shape or form wrong or not worthy. For God, we ask that right now that you would bless this tithe and offering, that we will continue to do your will as you would have us to. For it is in the precious name of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ who we pray. Let us all say together, Amen. Amen. God bless you. stand. number 410 it is well with my soul mm -hmm. congregation please join with us in singing this song amen amen
church. God bless you. It is just a blessing to be here today. I want to thank you all for your prayers, for your calls, and for your cards, for not only for myself, but for Miss Jones as well. Without your prayers and the love that you share with each of us, we wouldn't be standing here today because God has his way of making sure that we know that we are loved because of you. Thank you so much, church. I'm standing here because um, God has blessed me and brought me through all this sickness. I only have one more day to wear this thing on my arm. And God be praised. I can take this off. <laughs> but they told me that's the hard part because now I just have to worry about lifting up weights now to get the strength back in, but that's all right. Thank you. I bless the Lord. Bow your heads with me if you would, please, to me. Lead us in a word of prayer. Father God, I come humbly to you. A wonderful, wonderful day, oh God, that you've given me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessings, your guidance, and your prayers, oh Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless me with right now, oh God. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells within, oh God. I ask that you would place William behind the cross, oh God, that others may see that you live. I love you, Father, with all my heart, mind, strength, and soul, Lord Jesus. Father, I want to thank you right now for this congregation that you have blessed me with right now at Forest Heights Baptist Church and our friends, oh God, we thank you in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who I pray. Amen. 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 As I uh, <clears throat> to need to say uh, one or two things in reference to a young man that's visiting us today. Well, he's not visiting us because he's been here quite often. Um, Fred, Where, where's Fred at? You know, I'm not able to, okay. I just want to let you know that we appreciate you. We haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you back. Good to see you back. It, 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 it's wonderful to see Adrian in here today. Uh, it's, it's, it, you, know, you know that that's my nephew, right? It, it's usually the other way around, so I figure I, I beat him to it. But I'm, I'm thankful that God bless you to be here today as well. Do we have any other visitors at all today? Any other visitors? No? Okay, we're all family. Thank you, Lord, again. I appreciate you. Uh, today's message is uh, a little long one today, so I want you to get comfortable, if you would, please, and be prepared. The title of this message today is, I Am Not Ready. I Am Not Ready. 
It is out of the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16, and make a correction to 26. Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 to 26. Make that correction, please, because it says 30. I was reading it that day and gave her the whole thing. But I'm 16 to 26. Carol Ann is going to be reading for us this morning. Thank you so much, Carol Ann. Appreciate you. Thank you. Please stand for the reading of his word. Bless you, Lord. So Matthew 19, 16 through 26. We'll start with 19. Mm -hmm. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Mm -hmm. Verse 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Mm -hmm. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, he saith unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, the young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, mm. and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Verse 23. Then said Jesus unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 24, And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle mm. than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Mm. Verse 26, mm -hmm. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. This ends the reading of the word. Please have a seat. Amen. All things are possible. All things are possible. Thank you, Lord. I am not ready. That's just a common term. I think that we all are used to hearing and also being able to say ourselves, especially when we're getting dressed for Sunday morning service, and we're trying to figure out what we're going to wear, and the, the, the pair of pants that I was going to wear, they were just a little too tight. I wasn't able to get those on. I got to switch those. Uh, and my wife is saying, are you ready to go? I'm not ready yet. You know, we, we, we go to the store, and we realize that we didn't have everything that we need, and you realize you're in line and say, wait a minute, I'm not ready yet. I can't pay for this right now. So there's a lot of term, a lot of times that we use that particular term. But today it's got a special meaning to each of us in the sense of us not being ready. In this particular uh, segment of the Bible, God is, Jesus is speaking to, to those who are around there. And he just got finished speaking to the children that were there. And he had blessed them. He placed his hand on them and blessed them. And then here, as he got ready to leave Galilee, this young man stands up and says, I've got something I'd like to say to you. In verse 16. Would you please read that, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, mm -hmm. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Have any of you wondered what it would take for you to have eternal life? There are some that's in the sound of my voice right now that may have asked that question of themselves and then turn around and ask God, what is it that I need to do? Or perhaps you may have asked one of your friends, what must I do to, to, to have eternal life? And are, are we able to, to give them the guidance that they need? But this scripture helps us to understand that what needs, what's need to be done. And so Jesus turned around to him and said some things to him, if you please. Mm -hmm. 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That's a challenge within itself. I... I, I can't imagine what had gone on in that young man's thought pattern when Jesus turned around and spoke to him for a few minutes and helped him to understand that there's no one that's good but one, and that's God. Everybody else, we make mistakes and we do things that we ought not to do. 
And then we wonder whether or not we are ready yet. And so I know that each of us have somewhere along the line made a mistake, and whether or not we face up to it or not is another story. Sometimes I make a mistake, and I don't really want to let anybody know, and I don't want to say anything about it. But others may realize that you made that mistake and not live up to it. But, you know, God has a way of helping us to get through those situations, and he helps us to prepare ourselves to get ready if we're willing to do so. Because he gives us guidance on a daily basis and helps us to understand that if we choose to listen. At some point in my life, in your life, we did not believe. At some point. But the moment that you did, regardless of your age and when and where, all that, the point is, is that you did. You had got to the point to where you was what? Ready to do so. Yeah. This last week, I was listening to the Bible study, and one of the things that was being said from Minister Flood is that he got into his car and he got to the stoplight, and when the light turned from red to green, everybody started blowing their horn. They was ready. They wanted to go right then. And I'm sure you all have felt that before if you drive and somebody's pushing you to go. But if you're not ready yet, it's not going to take place. It's not going to take place. And so let's, let's go forward, please. Verse 18. Uh-huh. He saith unto him, which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, mm-hmm. thou shalt not commit adultery, thou mm-hmm. shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Yeah. Is, is that enough for us to realize these things that we ought not to do? Is that list complete? No. Uh, is, is, is there some other things that needs to be said? Please, in the next verse. Verse 19, mm-hmm. honor thy father and thy mother, mm-hmm. and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 20? No, I want you, that's good right there. Thank you. Those, that list right there is for all of us. Even though we have said that we are ready and we have accepted Christ, that list still applies to us. Yeah. It, it doesn't excuse us in any way, shape, or form because we have accepted him. Those things are still true to us. Yeah. We have to be what it says there. Honor our mother and father. Yeah. You know, and that's a hard thing for some of us to do today. Some, some of the younger ones and some of the ones that don't realize what the word of God says to us when we're supposed to honor our mother and father. Yes, they may not have been the mom and dad that you thought they ought to be or mom didn't do what you thought she should have done for you at your 26-year-old self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or, or dad, you know what I mean? So dad has this way of being rough and tough all the time in the house and telling you, you get that done because mom says you need to do it. Put that trash out, boy. You know, and so you need that, that hand. And so here God has given us a list of things that we ought to pay attention to so that when the time comes, we can say that I'm ready. Right. <laughs> I'm ready. I, I, I don't know whether or not uh, the individual, some of us, our mom and dad have not lived on earth as long as you have. You're still there. Uh-huh. They're gone now. Yeah. And so who's going to help you to get prepared? Who's going to help you to get ready? Yeah. Well, you know, you got members that's in the church. You have friends. You have others that's going to be able to speak to you about the, the, the word of God. You can, you can tell those who are, are around you that are, are blessed by the Lord because they have a friendly word to say to you. They have something to speak to you about. Or nobody else will speak to you, but yet this one person bumps you and say, good morning, how are you this morning? For some reason or another, that person spoke to you. See, God has his way of helping us and leading us to that right person that we need to see. I'm ready. I'm ready. And we never know when it's going to be time for that to happen because I don't know the age limit for each of us when we accepted Christ. But whenever it was, you was ready. And so if if we maintain these things that's listed here uh, in reference to us, we have to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's that's a thought now. That's a thought. Because, you know, I know some of your neighbors got dogs and they come over in your yard and you got a big old sign that says no dogs or you got one of those little statues of a dog you know, going to do his thing in the yard, and they see that sign, but it doesn't mean anything because the dog can't read. <laughs> so who you put it there for, you know, because he's he going to go if he can get over there, you know. Love yourself, you know, as you do your neighbor. So you're going to be able to speak to your neighbor in a, in a way that's going to help you to solve that issue. I was listening to one of the shows on TV the other day, and this young man had a, a tree that grew real tall in his yard, but the branches and stuff was all over to the, his neighbor's yard, and the neighbor didn't want those things there. So he told the guy about it. So he said, listen, you need, you need to get this stuff out of here. Cut, you know, cut that tree down. Do something with it. Wouldn't listen. So the neighbor got somebody to come over and cut down nine or ten of his trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Now, I don't know how you would respond to that if it was your yard, but I know it's going to upset you because he didn't ask you permission to do so, but that didn't happen. Love your neighbor as thyself. We have to come to some type of agreement to be able to get through these things, even with our family members. That's your neighbor, too. You know, I, I know that some of us don't speak to certain uh, family members because of something happened, but the word says to love. That's what we must do. And yes, sometimes it's, it's hard to do that because of the things that's going on in our lives and things that you may have done to me that I don't like. And so I'm not speaking to you no more. That's it. I'm finished. So the attitude is it, 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 it's thick then. You can't get through that. Well, the word of God is asking us to love thy neighbors as thyself. And I know it's not easy. But at the same time, those are things that we must look forward to do because it was a question that was asked. What is it that I have to do uh, to be saved? Live in, live in the kingdom of, of heaven. So if you ask yourself that question, pay attention to what's being said here in Matthew. Go back and read it later on. Just in this one little verse here, these verses, few verses here, and see what it is that we must do in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge. There's nothing easy about it. In, in verse 20, it tells us what? The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? <laughs> well, now, now he's talking to Jesus. Yeah. Now, you can talk to me and say, say that to me, but, I, you know, I, I can't answer that question. You know? mm -hmm. You've done everything? That, that's just, you've done all of that? You love your mom and dad? You, you, you love your neighbors? No, you haven't killed anybody, have you? <coughs> the young man saith unto him, all these things I have kept from my youth to where I am right now. I've, I've done all these things. So what else do I need to do? Now, there may be somebody that thinks that way. I don't know who it is, but you may know somebody. But the challenge is, is getting them past that point to where they realize that they have not been perfect. There's only one. And Jesus told them who that was in the beginning. He started speaking. There's only one. So where do you fit in with that, that you are so perfect, that you've done all these things? Now you say something else. <clears throat> what must I do? What else, what else do I need to do? Yeah. Well, here it comes, please. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, <laughs> and give it to the poor, <clears throat> and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and mm. follow me. Well... We're going to get to that last one in a few, that last verse here in a few minutes. But all prior to that, Jesus has said something to him that challenged him. I don't know if you've been challenged before in this same situation and that you are willing to give up whatever it is that's stopping you to say to yourself and to God that I am ready. Yeah. What is it that you have to, to do? What is it something that you in your life that you're not doing that's not quite right, that you're not ready to let it go just yet? Whatever it is. And you don't have to tell me, but you know. That's, that's what the issue is. You know, and guess what? God knows too. He knows exactly what it is that William needs to get rid of in his life in order for him to follow Jesus. He knows exactly what you need to do in your life to follow him. And even though I have accepted Christ, even though some of you here have accepted Christ, the issue is still, are you willing to let whatever that is go? There's some things that just we, we're not ready to let go of yet. And yes, I know you say you love him. I know you say that you obey him and you do the things that he's asking you to do. But there's one thing all the way in the back here that nobody else can determine but you. But God knows. And so if you're able to say that I'm ready, if you haven't, then make sure that you're willing to give up those things. Here he's a rich man. Now, we can say rich in the sense of money, in the sense of items, and all the other things. But what, what makes you rich? What, what do you consider yourself, when do you consider yourself as rich? The, the story is geared around this, this rich man, as it says here. But what makes you rich? A second or two to think about it. It's, it's not the car that you drive that makes you rich. You know, it's, it's not the clothes that you wear that makes you rich. What makes us rich is the relationship that we establish with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm rich with his love. 
And his love will help us to get through everything else that we need to do, regardless of how hard it may be. And I know things that we go through are hard, but there's something about the idea of saying, I am ready. Are you willing to let those things go? Whatever it is. This young man wasn't ready to do that, and he, he took off and he left. He couldn't, he couldn't, couldn't deal with that. Please, the, ne the next verse, if you would, please. Verse 22, mm -hmm. but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Yeah. He was sorry that that, that, that was the one thing that he hadn't accomplished from the time that he was little up to now and all the things that's prior to that. He loved mom and dad. He loves himself and he loves his neighbor. All those other things he's already completed. But there's just one thing, and that's all the stuff that I have. I'm just not ready to let it go. What is this in your life right now that's stopping you from saying, Lord, I am ready and I want to follow you? What is it that you have to get rid of? Do you feel that you have to get rid of it first? Well, let me share with you that's not the issue. Because the minute that you say that I am ready, that which you need to get rid of, God will help you to do it right then on the spot. He's going to help you. The minute that you make up your mind, if he had made up his mind right then and said, okay, Lord, I want to follow you, all those things would have been done. He wouldn't have been gone away sad and mad because he felt that he had the need to get rid of all his stuff. But if you're willing... To do that, you don't have to get rid of it all one time right then. You can just say, God, I want to follow you. He's going to help you get rid of it. He's going to help you to, to, to take all that wealth that you had and all the riches that you had and give it to the right people so that way they can live their life as well. So he's going to help you do that. But yet he got twisted there with all these things and he still wanted all that stuff rather than to have a relationship with God. The scriptures go on there. It doesn't stop there, please. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, mm. Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. You got so much that you can't let go of. Is there something that's causing you not to say, or not being able to say that I am ready? The word says that you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Some things we have to let go of. Some things we have to stop doing because it doesn't coincide with what God would have each of us to do as individuals. Because we are made in his image and at the same time he's, each of us are designed to do something to praise him. Mine might be a little different than yours and yours is going to be different from mine. But whatever it is that God has blessed you with, he wants you to use that. You can't do everything that everybody else does. I can't do it. I don't even want to try. But whatever it is that he's blessed you with, he wants you to use it. Maybe it's reading. I listen to my son sometime. He, he reads. He reads so fast, I can't even keep up with the page he was on. My daughter, uh, Stephanie, she reads like that. My daughter, Jennifer, she reads like that. They read so fast. You know? it, it's almost like those who have the telephone. I don't have my phone up here. That's a good thing. But those who have a telephone, and, 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 and they, when they're texting, I seen some that it was on the news. It was talking about people doing that, and, and they were being able to uh, do their texting with their thumb. Well, I tried that with my thumb, and I hit three or four letters at the same time. Everything looked like gobbledygook on there, <laughs> you know. And then there, there's those that are able to 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 use their their their, their index finger. That's me. See, so, so I don't have that ability. But those that do, they can they can text you and and. Five seconds later, bam, it's right back to you again. And my daughter said, Dad, what took you so long? I had to get something for your mother, girl. <laughs> yeah, I had to say something, you know. But, 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 the, but the issue is here is that we, we need to be ready, you know, and, and help others to be able to do the same thing. Read that one scripture again. You just read 23. Then Jesus uh -huh. said unto his disciples, uh -huh. Verily I say unto you uh -huh. that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. I want us to think about that for a second. It's, it's easy to say that or read that and say, well, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Well, you know, riches sometimes doesn't have to be all this money and stuff. It's, here. it's something, whatever it is that's causing you not to say that you're able to say that I am ready. What's holding you back? Yeah. But the rich man 
can enter to heaven if he's willing to accept Christ. If he's willing to say, I am. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are a lot of people right now that's in the world today that we may consider to be rich. They have billions of dollars. And there are some of those persons that's doing things around the world that will help other people. With their monies, they're blessing people with that money that God has given them. So you see, a rich man that hasn't got to the point to where he's able to say, or she is able to say, I'm ready. They're not going to be able to go in. So God is making it plain to us and helping us to understand with, this, with the scriptures here today to help us understand what we need to do. Obey my commandments. Yes, we're going to make mistakes and we're not going to do everything the right way, but we have a tendency to be able to go to a person that's going to be able to accept us as we are and ask him for forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. So when we make that mistake, we have someone that we can go to and ask for forgiveness and we will be forgiven. But you have to ask. You have to ask. And don't assume that you're going to be forgiven just because who you are. Well, God's going to forgive me anyway. I don't need to worry about that. Let him know. And ask him for forgiveness before you go on. Okay, please, the next, the next scripture, please. Verse 24. Uh -huh. And again I say unto you, mm. it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Wow. Now, when I first read the scripture some years ago, I was thinking about the eye of a needle, you know, and that we sow with and all that kind of thing, you know. And I said, not in the world, that, that ain't going to happen. But it's, it's, it's a little different meaning when it comes to this particular scripture. You also find it in, in the book of Mark as well in chapter 18, I think somewhere around 24, 25. Same thing is stated there. Um, and the key thing is, is that we realize that this eye of the needle that's being spoken of is a little different than what we may think in the sense of a sewing needle. In Jerusalem, there was a wall, and in that wall, there was a little small door that you could see. Or it was not necessarily you could see it, but it was carved out so that that door could open up. And the ways that it's explained, this eye of the needle, is that door to where the camels that could not jump over that wall was able to be able to go through that eye of the needle. And that's what that door is considered, the eye of the needle. But the key thing that needs to be said there in the sense of this eye of the needle, those Animals could not get through there unless all of the gear and stuff that they was carrying, all those packs that they put on those animals, could not get through that door unless that stuff was taken off. That's where the issue is. And so the eye of the needle is there, and it's in that door. But that camel can't go through until you offload all the gear that he had on it. Then he could go through. Well, Jesus is saying the same thing to us. You got to get rid of some of that baggage before you can come through. Huh? That, that's what we have to do. We have to get rid of some of that stuff. And, and not one of us that don't carry something around, all of us have. And so, so the issue is, is that are you ready to get rid of that stuff? Or something, whatever it is. It might be one thing. But the whole idea is that that camel can go through there, but he must, they must offload all that stuff he's got on, all the goods and everything else. That's where the key is. And so, so now you can say that I'm ready. Come on here, camel. Let's go on through this thing. Here, pull them on through there. Close that door. Can't anybody else get in it? So now you know what you have to do. You got to get rid of some of that stuff. But God is making it plain to us. He's helping us to understand by using something even in that time that would be understood once it was explained. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand it, making it plain to us so we know now what you meant by that. Please, the next scripture. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, yeah. Who then can be saved? Who can be saved? Wait, wait, I can't get through no eye of a needle. So I can see where that question may have come up. They're puzzled now. They've been with him all this time, and now he says we can't be saved unless we are able to go. I'm going to do that. You got to get rid of some of that baggage. It takes a while sometimes for us to get rid of that baggage. It took them a while to get that camel unloaded with all the stuff they had on it. You know, and I understand that. And but whatever it is that you're carrying with you from childhood to now that you haven't gotten rid of, even though you have accepted Christ, it's still there. You need to be letting that stuff go. Right. And God is helping us to understand exactly how we need to do that because we can't go through the hive needle unless we've gotten rid of that load. And then we can go to be in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. 
That's what he does to help us to understand that. He makes it plain to us, and I'm so thankful that he makes it plain to us today so we can understand. Even for those that are in the sound of my voice, it pertains to you as well. Not just those that are here in the sanctuary this morning. It's all of us. And so the key thing here is that we must understand that we can't do it by ourselves. And verse 26 kind of brings everything together for us, please. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, Lord. Amen. See, with man, these, this, this is not possible. You, you can't get through that eye of the needle. It's impossible for you to do it. It's also impossible for you to get rid of all that stuff you got carrying around unless you ask for forgiveness. You can't get rid of it by yourself. You, you, you're not strong enough to do it. Man is not strong enough to do it himself. We're just not. I don't care how many pounds you can pick up and how many bench pressures you can make. doesn't matter. It ain't about your strength in that way. Your strength needs to be in God. That's what gives you strength when you're laying on your back and you can't get up. When you, your knees hurt you so bad you can't stand up. When you can't raise your arm up high enough above your head because it's stuck somewhere. Yeah, yeah you see, see, God can, can help that happen for you. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to raise it, but that's all right. God has a way of being able to do that. He can help you get rid of that baggage that you're carrying around, whatever it is. So if it's one thing that you have today that you need to get rid of, drop it here at the altar today before you leave out of here. Drop it. Don't, don't, don't take it out here with you. Ask God for forgiveness so you can say to him, God, I am ready, Lord. I am ready. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. He says so because the, the last sentence here tells us this. It says, but with God, all things, all things are possible. That's what I need to hear this morning. All things are possible through God. And so if that's what I need to do in order for me to go forward, I'm going to accept it. I'm ready, Lord. Amen. Here I am. Amen. Take me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Yeah. It is through the love that I have for you, God, to help make this thing plain to each of us today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now we know what we need to do. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Almighty God, I come humbly to you, and I thank you so much for your word this morning, O oh God. I pray, Father, that your word has not fallen on, fallen on deaf ears, but that we run out of here today, O oh God, to be able to share your word with somebody that needs to hear this, Lord Jesus. I thank you right now in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, do I pray. Amen. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for discipleship right now, this is a time in the service which we ask those of us that are here today, that have not accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and are willing today to say that I am ready, that I'm willing to, to accept you, Lord, as my personal Lord and Savior, that you're able to do that this day. And for those of you that are home right now and on Zoom, if you want to do that as well, you're capable of being, do, being able to do that right where you sit right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask you to do this. Let's bow our head. If you would say this prayer with me, if you're home right now and if you're here right now and have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to, to say this prayer with me. Almighty God, I come humbly to you this day as a sinner. Father, I ask right now that you would forgive me of my sins. I ask that you would please accept me as I am, that I may live my life according to how you would have me to leave, live it. I ask right now, God, that you would bless me and accept me into your fold. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, then take that move. If you're here today, come to me and let me know. Let one of the deacons know that you want to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're home and you're on the telephone, by all means, call to this church today at 301 839-1166 and let us know that you want to accept Christ. So you accepted Christ already this day. What must I do now? If you're ready. If there's anyone here today that is ready to accept Christ as their person, Lord and Savior, please come forward if you will. Oh Jesus. Do you know him today? If you choose to come to the forward, to forward to the to the altar, please come. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without Him, how lost I would be. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him? Do you know him? him today? You know him today. Do that turn you can come to the altar if you choose. Away. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Without you, how lost I would be. How lost I would be. One more time, oh Jesus. Jesus. Yes, sir. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him? Do you know him today? Today. Do not turn him. Don't turn him away. away. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You can call, continue to, to pray with him. Is there anyone else that would have to come forward, that would like to come forward to, to have prayer? If you will, you, you can come at this time if you like. I'll give you a few minutes to do so if you'd like to come forward. I am. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that, please. Yeah, I want to thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Father God, I come up to you. Thank you for your strength. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Would you please come forward as we prepare for our communion? Undress the table. You might, you might have to help them. Would you help them? You might have to help them. It's only the three of them. Merciful Lord, and we 
glory that we are. Allow us to take part in this ceremony mm -hmm. as a reminder of your actions for the humankind. Yes, Lord. Allow us to test the representative of your blood mm -hmm. and your body so that we may ever more dwell in you and you in us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're going to put your help there. Bye. 
face right to the rising sun. Thank you. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. On the day in which our Lord and Savior was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, said, take, eat, for this is my body. Likewise, he took the cup, and he blessed it. He gave it to his disciples, said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood, given for many for the remission of sin. Also, prior to them communing, one of the things that we must do is to examine ourselves. I would like for you to take a moment, if you would please, to examine yourself and make sure that if there's anything that you need to get rid of, let God know right now before we commune. Take a moment, please. Amen. 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 Seeing that all have been served, let us commune together. Our wine, the blood of Jesus, let us prepare to commune. Let us commune together. Would the deacons come please and redress the table? Everybody say amen. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 After they communed, they sang a song, and the scripture says, Then they departed. Let us sing together. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Let the church say, Amen. Let 
the church say amen amen amen, amen. do you love him amen, amen. do uh -huh. you love him amen. amen let everybody say Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence in exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore, let us all say together, Amen. Oh, I'm so grateful.